Yo yo. So, finally, we're here with Thrones of Decay, and we can finally show a little bit all the real C stuff and stuff, and the uh, changes, reworks. No DLC stuff yet or units though, but we can fight them. But we can't actually play as them. So that's like the only real embargo we have left. There, Rail, welcome as well, and Jungle Bear, Rab and the Fast Boy. Um. So I was thinking that we might go a little bit through all the three factions and see what they ac actually have done. I haven't really checked much myself. Uh, I usually save that for stream, even though we had it for about a week, I think now. Uh, I did start up a Yelp campaign and a Clan Angron campaign just to check some things. Um, but it's a substantial rework uh, from what the little the I checked before Magnus. it's a freaking substantial rework As so I, Maraz, I, am ready. I don't exactly remember this what we had here before but I think there's a little bit of changes here right I also noticed that they changed the icon on the handgunners I, I feel like they did. Like, I can't really say how it looked before, but I feel like this is a new icon for handgunners. Like this little thing here. It's just small things I've seen. Um, sometimes you even forget there's new lords too. Yeah, uh, like it's a pretty big one. So I think we're gonna go through a little bit to... I don't know if you guys want to see, but I do want to check it out. So Gelt has a new starting position, which is in Cathay. So it's actually like the trailer now. And he... This test realm. It's basically early access for cre content creators. So kinda. Uh, there's usually not super much change between the actual release and this though. Uh, but there's some bug fixing and stuff happening. Uh, in between. But this build is very close to release build. Very close to release build. And, um, yeah, he actually has this mechanic now. College of Magic. Enable recruitment of wizard and special campaigns. Hey, Wells, welcome. Uh, he also has changed some other stuff, I believe. We might as well load it up and uh, go in for it. Because I got a tutorial when I started this up, and I was like, ah, oh, damn, should have saved that. I, I never remember that now, the tutorial. But it's probably not that hard to figure out, right? Because I just, just wanted to see how it worked, and uh, I got a full tutorial on how this campaign worked. And it's probably gone now, since I already started one campaign. Mm -hmm. But I know things have changed. I don't know about this campaign, though. I feel like it's probably going to be very easy compared to other campaigns or uh... might and magic are mine to command. I feel like it might be very very like so first things first, right? You probably have seen a little bit already maybe. Uh we start with a we start being buddies with the dragon, no aggression and military access. So, diplomacy here, like, super easily done. And it, it's probably the boys you want to be friends with anyway here, right? You and the Iron Dragon. You start fighting the Fire Nomads. And... So this is going to change the balance in this area, right? Before, in my campaigns, we had Snitch and uh, Loki up here. They were pushing kind of hard, and sometimes Siege too. So... Chaos had a slight advantage, I would say, overall in my campaigns. Um, but Cathay was still very strong. Even though they had three factions against two, they, like, like... I don't know if it was like 70-30 Cathay win anyway, but now Gelt's here too. That's, uh, that's gonna change things, I think, a little bit. How should we proceed? So, you started with a general, which still only has a Pegasus. Confident. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably what you would do, you take out this little faction here. I don't think they have too we'll many settlements, the right? If five. So you probably take this and the little region beside the Wood Elves. 
then you just go in for the vampires and then you go for snitch and then you just go up for Loki, and then you have this whole re region under control because you can be friends with meow meow and uh, iron dragon right that shouldn't be too hard but we have what? new skill points to uh, i believe on guild so I think he is slightly changed here too, right? Gives 20 armor for own army. That's pretty darn decent since a lot of Empire troops are not super armored. He has an aura with armor, which is his first old 12 skill. He has a new plague and attrition skill. I'm fairly sure I didn't have this before. And replenishment, which is good, right? Um... This is now Hellstorm buffs, which I think before was Steam Tanks. This now buffs Missile Damage for Hellstorms and Explosion Radius. Which could be kind of crazy, actually, like... Because this is a faction-wide buff. This is not just for Geld. This is faction-wide Hellstorm buff. Which sounds pretty insane. And... More armor. And then we have the wizard thing. And lore of battle monster still. I want to say that he had greater arcing conduit before. But I just might have misremembered that. It was a while ago we played Geld. Or any Empire faction really. Since I've been waiting for this DLC. And we can still buff guns. But we also had the option to buff melee infantry. Now up here, they lock, you can only take once, so that's only for Lord's Army, so we still have kind of the gun skill that he had before, but you can choose now. Which is, in Empire's case, I would probably be Missile Strength for for them. I don't know, did they do anything with his quest items? Maybe I was thinking about this. Uh, I want to say they're sort of same. That's a good one too, though. That bonus for that. I want to say they're sort of the same. And then we have the College of Magic on top of this. Last unique skill is just uh, Master of uh, Gold. Ready. So you get cheaper and uh, less cooldown on metal spells. I think that's exactly the same as it was before. Lower mass, or lower metal. And this is his thing. So, we earn these books. Searing Doom Swam, exactly. So, we earn books by having wizards in our armies. And we get more books, the more wizards we have in the armies. And we spend them to boost up or recruit heroes. New music? Is it? Yes. Hmm. yes. Monka Heli watches white people happy smokes while running over civilians of Chicago and fat dank people is also there too. <laughs> I have one though. How are you doing press? Thank you for the 20. Appreciate it. So I haven't actually checked what every one of these do. So you can recruit any wizard at any point in any city with books, which is pretty darn freaking good, right? You can get a life mage on turn one if you want to. And it also increases capacity, so you won't overcap anything with your books. Like the capacity thing is stupid good. And they also have a a army ability, sort of, right? Or whatever. So for gold, we uh, transmute uh, to money. Books to money. We also have amethysts that have the damage all enemy forces with the region with the amethyst wizard. Don't know how this is, but... Let's see the last one. Armor for enemy forces within the same region as the gold wizard's army. 30 negative armor. Not sure. Ashes and Dusk. Grants army ability Ashes and Dusk. Which is a freaking cataclysm spell. 
for two turns. Target Amethyst um, Wizard. Oh, okay, so we get it in the army, two uses. Like, that is some good freaking single target damage. That's uh, a beefed up spell. We also get items too, actually. We need to check the items when we do the mages. So, we can equip items that are unique to mages with Geld's faction. So, Geld can get this armor, which is okay, right? Nothing amazing, but it's kind of okay. You can also get a weapon for Geld only, which uh, Transmutation of Blood gets actually super cheap, I think, with that. Not super cheap, but still very cheap for what it actually does. And we have the gener generic that can be equipped by any metal mage, I believe. Oh, no, no, this is just a buff. Never mind. And we can also get the Golden Globe, the Cataclysm spell. Is this an item, actually? Or do we just get this permanently? No target required. Might actually be permanent buffs. Looks like death, we have two items. One of us is basically infinite magic. So this item I look actually looked at beforehand. And this looks insane. The only negative is that you actually have to get it on a death mage. But he doesn't technically need to do anything. He needs to start killing a little bit with death. That's like sort of hard right. If they haven't like used up death magic. Which they might have. I actually have no idea about. If they have used up death magic. But this item looks insane. So basically get permanent reserves. You juice up with a couple of kills on your death mage. And then you have permanent magic. It will always regen 0 0.1 magic per second. Which is kind of insane. Can hope for Miracle Purple Sun. They might get, might have tuned it. Like, they did kind of show off Purple Sun in the DLC trailer, right? There's definitely an option that they actually have buffed Purple Sun. Which is very mediocre, right? Uh, like, it's not bad in the current state of the release version. But it's almost never worth using it. Because it's also random. And we have another so make death mage spells cheaper for the whole all armies. So that, this is just permanent mage buffs. Hmm. So bright key. The target Bright Wizard will cause wall breaches when besieging. Destroy all enemy defensive supplies. I see this being very useful. Uh, no, we're not allowed to play any of the DLC stuff. We can look at all the rework, we can play all the rework, we can play against the factions, but we're not played as the factions. That's gonna be later. Let's see, I have the command still. So, today, FLC. DLC on the 25th, so it's next week. So FLC includes all reworks, a uh, new Nurgle Boy, and... Yeah. Like, we can play any dwarf, any empire that is not a part of DLC. Or an and any Nurgle. And check all what they have to be done. So like, for example, we're doing now, checking out what they've done to the old guilds. Um, this ability here, depending on how easy it is, get to tomes, right? This is something I will definitely use if I have a bright mage, right? Because I love breaking walls. See the weapon. Items can only be equipped by... So all the items here are locked to the specific caster, so you can't just stack them, right? So we have to equip this torch on a bright wizard, for example. Cascading cloak. Make it cheaper. That's actually really cheap, cascading cloak then. 
it's already cheap and it gives it negative two plus you can spec into it so that's gonna be like super cheap and then we got magma storm here kind of figured that super fat uh, fire magic then we have celestial um that is a free move Instantly replenish action points of target army with Celestial Wizard. And if I read this correctly, that is all armies with Celestial Wizards. So if you have a Celestial Wizard in every army, you can get a free movement phase for everybody. That is actually kind of insane, but it's also a little bit more expensive. Uh, we get the Super Thunderstorm too. Which we have to pay magic. 20 magic? What's the item then? Astrolabe of Tomorrow's Moon. Oh, cheaper Comet of Casadora. An insane ambush protection too. I love me some cheaper Comet of Casadora. Okay. Jade Restoration. We can instantly heal our army. Also could be very useful. Storm of Renewal. Yeah, Cataclysm spell seems to be kinda... They do cost 20 magic though, so they, they might not actually be kinda free. Like they are for some other factions. They do actually cost 20 magic in the corner there. Uh, Jade Wizard. Battle healing cap, 20%. That is insane. Especially if you're using like big boy units. Like steam tanks. And cheaper regrow too. Also pretty good. And yeah, super magic. Beast, little amber mage. Uh, Call of the wild or amber with... Ooh. Three uses too? Two minute cooldown. Three uses of an elemental beast incarnate. That's sort of useful. The Ember Wizard's got a Hippogriff before too, so they got a good mount as well. And I actually. Oh, yeah, it's a buff spell. Okay. Let's check the armor. Cloak of Unrayer. Good armor. Removes terror and fear. And adds fear to him. Okay. What do we have for our light? My probably least favorite magic school. Give 200 barrier. Eh, big. I'm of Mok is just the... I don't think I ever used this spell actually, to be fair. Speed and charge, an enemy cannot move. Wait, it's a whole map? Effect range, endless, range, endless. The whole map actually can't move? Hmm. Yeah, that could be useful. For 45 seconds, you can kill the whole army in 45 seconds. If they're in a good position, right? That's actually sort of insane. 45 second freeze. What item do we get? Barrier and ability rending or reflect. Is this infinite projectile redirection? Wait. Oh my god, you can cheese so much shit with this if it works like I think it does. So. 55 meter aura around our light mage, which should include our light mage. 
we can just sit above them. And they shoot at us. And they die. Duration is endless, so it's always active. So I don't know if we use the spell, uh, the redirect spell that Cathy has. I th I I'm thinking it works the same way. So you have to choose a target to do the redirect at, right? And this is an AoE. So I think you place your wizard over the range of the enemy. And then you just let him stay there. Because nobody can shoot him down. And yeah. That's about it. Nobody can shoot him down. <laughs> this sounds like the cheese item of the patch already. Oh yeah, we can also show the crown, by the way. I don't know, have, I have no idea how you get the crown, but there's a new, new, like, sort of Kane-ish item in the game. Crown of Domination, or whatever it's called. Shadow. The fuck? Unlocks stalking stance for target army with a gray wizard. Nemesis crown. Yeah, correct. That's uh, that's in too. We can show that if uh, that one we can do. So we can become a skaven for two turns if we have a shadow wizard or oh, gray. This is uh, becoming a skaven with a hundred percent extra ambush too. It's not even that cheap or uh, expensive. Six turns cooldown with two turns duration. So you can become a Skaven a third of the playthrough if you have enough tomes. Dance of Despair is the debuff, right? Oh, they added stuff to this. Remove Undead, remove Construct, remove Unbreakable, remove Demonic, remove Elemental, and 24 negative leadership. You can make anything flee. And the item, it is Penumbra, and also removes mist cost on anything, Shadow. 20% cooldown. You can overcast for free, pretty much, okay. Okay, nothing super there. I think the most broken item is still this one, though. Alright, depending on how it works, right? But you also have to have a light mage, which I am not super, super, super duper about. Hmm. Okay. Tech tree has also been slightly adjusted, I think. There's a new tech tree for state troops too. Unlocks recruitment of the following troop. Wait, you can just do this in technology now? That's kind of nice, though. Huh. Arcane S is gained from post battle loot. Plus one uses for cataclysmic spells. Dream Patriarch. This looks like... Oh, immune to snow attrition. Unleashed cataclysm cup of coffee on my body. <laughs> ready for the campaign. Good job. Everybody's ready. I like that we can get immunity to snow. There is a little bit of snow here and there that is actually like viable for us. I think most of this is word of the same, right? Yeah, it looks like sort of the same. Oh, that's range, actually. That's new. I think they actually nerfed the... Um, there's no more reload reduction here anymore. Oh, there, there's 10%. I think they had more before, right? So didn't they have like... 25% reload reduction? But 10% range is super good too. 
Um, but I think about the same pick here. I think this was not missile resist, right? Bigger loss reduction. Immune to psychology for cavalry units. Okay. How's the normal faction rework? Uh, I haven't actually checked yet. We're, we're probably going to go in for it. Uh, as soon as I check through most of this. Yeah, they change a little bit in the artillery too. Ammunition is still there. Reload. And we got range too. How much range do we have? 10% so it's another 48. So Hellstorms are going to be base over 500 range. With the technology. That is insane. War machines. They got their own now. Aura of Protection. Or Luminarchs. As long as we have 15 Winds of Magic. That's not a bad defense, actually. 20%, that's uh, quite a bit. Encourage for Steam Tanks and Luminarchs and Land Ships. Ballistic Plating for Steam Tanks. This is something new. Flat and heavy plates designed specifically to protect against projectiles. This unit is capable of deflecting, even directing cannon fire. Wait, are you gonna kill a steam tank now if you can not even kill it with a cannon? Capable of deflecting, even direct cannon fire. Like, that was a, like, a sure thing to kill a steam tank was, like, guns. Which they might be redirecting back at you now, right? Uh, okay, let's see. Oh, they made vulnerable things? So they redirect 100% from the front. 50% from the sides and 10% from the rear. This is kind of a cool thing that they're playing around with. So you actually have to flank a steam tank. That is actually kind of a cool thing. So... Does it get better when you get the technology here then? Ballistic plating. I called ballistic plating. Damn it. Full tip, stay. Directional missile block. Uh, shields never had 360. Shields, you could always shoot, shoot a shield a unit from the back, but steam tanks have a little bit of difference. They actually do have a deflect from the back and sides too. But steam tank or uh, infantry with shielded units, you can just shoot them on the side and they can't uh, deflect those. Like normal shielded infantry have like a. Let's see. They have. Let's see. 35 from the front. So it's only from the front. How you doing, Subazon? Hmm. But yeah, nothing had 360 unless it had a talent point for it, like yeah, the Cathay, uh, Cathay, the word with, um, let's see, Cathay, Cathay, what I called again, uh, where are they? The tra oh, this is the first one. Magistrate. They have actually 360 in the talent point, but I don't know if it shows here. No, it doesn't. They they can get 360 missile block, but we are few actually seen this. This is Gelt's new faction that we've been uh, we've been checking out like general changes and his new faction stuff. Pretty much, we're checking out technology now. So if, if they have done, they have done a little bit of reworking with the technology, but it looks like it's sort of same-ish. They kind of slimmed it down a little bit. Oh, we can get attrition there too. They can be immune to high seas and snow now. And they kind of put all the hero caps in just in the middle here. Which is nice. 
streamline it a little bit. This is this guilt tick only, maybe? Culture magic. Spell resist, five words save for wizards. And battle wizards and cooldown and extra magic. Gelt is the same faction, but he starts here now. This is his start turn. We are still in turn one. We haven't done anything really. So since uh, the new um, one dragon starts in Visenland here, they moved him from Solon, which I think is a good thing. Like it was getting a little bit cramped there. Having three Empire Lords basically in walking distance is a little bit weird, right? But he is still Empire in the uh, bottom, but he has a new mechanic with uh, spells and stuff and wizards. And he now starts here, friendly with Iron Dragon. And we have a new resource too that he uses, Arcane Essays. What is his objective? Um, okay, so we have to do his thing. Complete two unique College of Magic repeatable actions or unlocks. That is a short victory and it gives three caps. Long victory is due 24. Okay, so we just need to do magic stuff with Gelt and he, that's, that is his victory stuff. No particular faction or anything. Who calls? Starts with Hellstorm Rocket Battery 2. Holy crap. Started with a cannon before, right? But he actually starts with a Hellstorm now. Pretty solid uh, starting army. Let us begin. Can we get Empire troops? Sir? Except by unlocks. Weapon practice. Because we don't Summon. do the other system now. Let's just do this a little bit quickly, oh. just so we get a city. Which faction would you like to see a little bit longer of, though? We're gonna go through a little bit of the... most of the things. But which faction would you like? I think a lot of people wanted to see Empire. Either way, on the Discord at least. Hmm. Two artists before, Mortar, and the second one's... Yeah, I think he had two too. That, that's... Correct, I feel like that's correct. So you get a little bit of an event when you take the first, which you can uh, take control of lo local recruitment and a little bit of Diplo for five turns. Or you can instantly get this to tier two, or we can get money and he will be pissed with us. Hmm. Most people already parry Epidemus. Epidemus is not really something I'm super interested in, to be fair. It's uh, it's probably going to be Empire. Um, my vote is probably going to be for Empire at least. Two unique landmarks. Bro and Kathy. Plus we actually get Pistoliers. I like Pistoliers but I never build a building and them getting a landmark here is awesome actually. We also got a... Oh this is so good. All Master of Elemental Winds Wizards. All armies. This means juicy spells. Juicy freaking spells. And they change some buildings too, right? Thank God. They made Sean of Sigmar tier 2! I can get my heroes on tier 2 rather than having to wait until tier 3 to get my... Warrior Priest? Doesn't bump down Hellblaster, right? To tier 4. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. We can't play the DLC stuff. That's why people play Epidemus, I guess, since it's technically new, right? Ooh. Okay, so they split free company into a new building with the Witch Hunters. 
And you can get grenade launcher as tier 3. So they moved which... Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. Witch hunter are no... Oh, tavern has a new effect. Upkeep for local army. Or region. Could be slightly useful. If you want to defend a city and actually never move out of it. Uh, that's still 500, so they have insane economy. This gives a research right now, too. So, Hellstorms are still tier 4. But mortars are tier 2, so you can get you can get insta access to mortars, pretty much. Reich's Guard are now in here, too. And with the Knights of Blazing Sun. Hmm. Okay, too bad we don't actually have a real city. We can actually see exactly. A little bit weird always checking buildings in a small city, right? This is something I love though. Getting heroes on tier 2 is such a big, big thing. You don't want to wait to get your heroes. It's always like waiting to get your warrior priest. Do we have new traits? Actually? Do we have new traits? Uh... Wasn't this movement speed before also? Uh, we didn't roll any new traits. Can we get any heroes here? I am ready. Are Maybe. you? Do not waste my potential. Hmm. Let us begin. I almost want to build it to see what we have here. Great wise. Oh my god. Yelta has such a good zone. Look at this. So we got like two really good landmarks. We got dice, and we got medicine, and we got lumber in his first zone. That's gonna be money. Especially since we can probably get a trade deal. Yeah, we can get a trade events. deal for free instantly with so long Iron Dragon. Not obstruct mine. Okay. Okay, so if we wanted to get a mage done, we can just use our books now. We got... 143 from those two battles, so that's quite a bit. That's more than a wizard. So if we were to say that we would want a jade wizard, we can target a city. We'll increase the cap and the bang. Jade wizard. jade wizard. Now we got a jade wizard. Mm -hmm. Friendship is both more, more valuable than gold. So they have given wizards a little bit of extra stuff here that you might notice. They have a new line. With uh, magic appropriate stuff. Imperious. You can't choose traits though, so I can't trade farm these guys if I want to get them early, right? Um, but yeah. Cooldown and miss cost. Uh, hero action stuff. More capacity and uh, less cost. More armor and speed, and battle healing cap for life. Can I do another one? Do I have to wait and turn again? Can I do like a... Oh, I can. I actually do kind of want to check out the light wizard. What they have. Uh, okay, so we can do another mage strike straight away. I also kind of want to do check out the amber, if they still have their mound. Or actually death. Let's do death. Of the occult. What conjurations? And monster tracker. Just look like the traits are the same. So what do you get in the end there? Negative battle healing cap for enemies. That's a little bit interesting. Enemy armies in local region. Negative ten battle reading cap. Yeah, but you still have to use the tomes, right? So you're going to be stuck by that. And it looks like there's at least one turn cooldown on it. So, for example, we're out of tomes now. So we can't do any more. That was 100 each. But it also looks like there is... Yeah, it's one turn cooldown. So it's not like a long cooldown. If you're overflowing on tomes, I guess you can roll... Roll mages with that if you wanted to. Hmm. 
Yes, Jody. There was one actually here. Uh, I think this one gave 20. But it, we got 150 from the two battles, so I don't feel like they're going to be super hard to get. I, am a I think... Didn't we have something on Gelt too that gave you tomes? Maybe I was wrong? Hmm. This is gonna help to level up those mages super fast. Yeah, maybe I was wrong. Maybe we didn't have anything on Gelt that gave us more tomes. Mm hmm. So this is Gelt. Um. Yes. Quick. Quick look at Gelt, how he actually is playing right now. Don't know if we're going to be playing Gelt, but we probably start a new one then. I command to war. I'm for the dwarves. Uh, fulfill my slayer. You have my axe. I don't see any I much thief. changes here, right? Master of ancient lore. I don't oh, think there's too much changing here. Let's start going with the one. Kugat's faction effects? Ah, damn it. Too, I was too slow reading. We we can go to Kugat's. See if they... I don't remember what he had. Do you actually remember what they had, Pally? What he had before? Because I don't... It, it's something like spreading plague faster, right? I believe. Something like it. I am very unsure how this works though. The new uh, system here. Because I didn't read. And Grove and something's plague spread right. So, Rajas are now... We can't check the forge if we don't play a little bit because we need 200 of gold. That's gonna take a bit. So I have no idea if they did anything to the forge. I know that they completely remade the tech tree though. This is not a gigantic web of technology that the dwarves had before. And then it also split into two. So you have clans and you have guilds. I think clans is... Clans is infantry. So... Charge reflection for great weapon units. Hmm. Wait. There's an ability for dwarves. A formation ability. 100% mass, 20 missile block, 10% missile cannot run. Use of out of melee. Shield wall. Hmm. That could be pretty good. It's only for these boys, though, the lower tier stuff. Hold to the clan. Uh, range. It kind of looks sort of the same, right? Tech-wise, like the Empire, it, uh, they did sort of have the same range, they just compounded it a little bit. This is uh, this being like four for different technology, it's just one now. Actually two, never mind. It's put into two. But I think that there was like one for leadership, one for armor, one for defense, and one for weapon strength, almost. Any cool new ability here? Rudge. Wound. Age of Reckoning. Wait, there was something there. Whirlwind of Death. That looks good. You get a Whirlwind of Death on the Slayers now? It's six magic attacks, 100% armor pet. That could either be insanely powerful, or, or he probably won't even notice it. Hmm. 
Oh, okay, we can actually get shield ball on uh, the big boys too. I don't know how that works on hammers so. though. Oh no, that's only for iron breakers. Any changes to green skins? Uh, I don't think so. I'm not 100% sure, but I do not think so. Anything new and shiny here? Five replenishment. Pretty good. Or we usually don't have good replenishment, right? So. Go through this a little bit quickly, see if there's any interesting stuff. That is new and shiny. Oh, they still have the commandment, but it's way, way later. This is usually what he did, like, early. Go for grow. Okay. This is the new Age of Reckoning. So, I don't exactly know how this works, and I didn't read too much. I kind of just clicked. But you're going to have to build this up, from what I understood, until it's done, and it's 10 turns. And depending on how far you've gone, you get a lot of buffs or debuffs. So... It doesn't look like you just have to do grudges. To get it. Hey, what else says living ancestor? You soon Oh wait, that's your middle shelf. Actually, yeah, that's the old stuff. Dwarfs have a wa kinda, but we don't get an army, right? Kinda. But we don't get an army. We just get buffs if we do it. And then we also get access to grudge units, which is something new. So we can get it's sort of Y units, right? But we can stack them. And they have something with them that's like sort of renowned, but they're not limited to one. What happened to Gelp? We were just going through the things. We're going through the things a little bit quickly, like, or quickly, it's been an hour. Sort of. Um, we haven't really done the new faction stuff. That's how I decided it. We are not, not decided on the campaign yet. But yeah, we went through his faction and the changes a little bit. Anymore. So, yeah, I guess you get these as rewards. You finish an Age of, Age of Reckoning and scruff tier higher. So I don't know how many we get, but we get these units, right? And they also changed flame cannons also. So you might have used flame cannons before. And... Um, they were sort of mortar-ish firebombs, right? They're shrapnel now. So I don't know if they're... how they work anymore. The flame cannons. That's all flame cannons, not just a grudge settler flame cannon variant. But that's something you get for rewards from the grudge... grudges too. So I think those could be pretty cool, the grudge units. I don't know if they changed any of your skills. Not my flame cannons. They're probably better. To be fair, when when they change something in a DLC, they're probably better, right? I feel like this is about the same as he had before, right? Touching my stuff that worked fine. <laughs> Uh. Brimstone guns are all... They were my favorite choppers. They were the only choppers I actually used. Um, brimstone guns. Where are the brimstone guns? Uh, why... Brimstone guns. Flaming attacks. They were my favorites. They're not explosive. I don't know if they were explosive before. Hmm. 
Mm. Low ammo flamers. Hmm. That's uh, a little bit sad. Runesmiths. Did they have this line before? I don't think they did, right? I don't think Runesmiths had this line before. Am I just poor shitty memory or is this new? It's new. Okay. Yeah, I thought so. So, a lot of rune stuff. It's a lot of good stuff. Like, this is amazing for any dwarf. Because you usually have to deal with tunneling, right? And you usually have to deal with Skaven in some way. This point is amazing. Spell resistance is kind of good too. And then some cooldown on that. Did they change this? Anything? Hmm. Yeah, I actually did not think they would touch runesmiths. Isn't this new too? Dungin? I don't remember that ancestral blood. That looks like it's new as well. Ancient. Okay. Got a sort of weapon monster. I've got another Thungan. I hope we got something else. I have a Grungi apparently saved. Do I have a... I guess a... let's check if they did anything to the... I think technically weapon monster is a little better. Because this is armor piercing damage. So probably this is still better. For for the wisdom of okay, we got some new shit here. Um this for basic units and recruit rank. Helpful capacity. Ooh, movement range and replenish. I can slash. Can choose one of these two. Anything else new here? They still have a deadly onslaught. I wonder if Grungi and Valeia has been changed in any way. I wonder if Grungi and Valeia has been changed in any way. Okay, how does the grudges look? Legendary grudges, legendary lords, and... So, from what I heard, you actually confederate anybody through grudges now, which is an amazing thing. Because dwarves are... Really freaking annoying to confederate sometimes. And it actually says if they have perished, you just get their lord to the pool, which is the important part, right? So we can now confederate with grudges instead that we collect. So we can confederate any of the lords just by clicking a button. And then we have our legendary grudges. So this is something I saw before, which looks very, very interesting. That we can use the old world mountains and gray mountains. So we can restore an underway net, which is basically a fast travel, from what I understood. From reading this, if we capture these key dwarf cities, we can restore fast travel for dwarves between regions. Which is something I think this game needs more of. Because there's, it's so freaking big now, it takes like forever to move anywhere. And Final Vengeance. I have absolutely no what this is, but this is basically just kill the elves because, yeah, point years. 
we got a hex pointy here is a question. And then we also have another one. Ensure the following building has been constructed. This is just money and grudges. All the miners a summon ability if we delete Skaven or Scryer and Mulder. This is uh, this is gonna be a good thing. Any summon unit to get for free is like a good thing. And there we get another fast travel point with the Grimgor and the Chaos Dwarfs. Also, we gain a Dwarf Ancestor Relic, which I can't look at apparently until we get it. Bad. Uh, we'll get a building in Oak of Ages. And then we have Chaos, which also gives shorter travel time between the underway network. I don't know. I think it's just tunnels. I don't know how long it actually takes like cooldown. I think it's sort of like the Wood Elf stuff more, maybe. Yeah, it's probably just need to own. Uh, like, I don't even know if we need to be allied. Like, we just... You now we already have Blackwater and this, for example. So, if any of the Dwarf factions own these, we're just good, I think. So, it might just unlock, like, randomly for us if we're playing Gromindal. If the Dwarves do good, right? So, then we just... Oh, we have access to our... And uh, fast travel down there now. Which is also nice. And we have Dark Elf. A unique Dwarf Lord is added to your recruitment pool. For killing off Dark Elves. Which is something Romino will probably do naturally, right? That would be like our natural gameplay of Romino. Probably. And uh, legendary grudges. Eight peaks. Get two extra units per army. Oh, they're capped. I wonder what they're capped though. Silver Pinnacle, a unique landmark. Okay. Oh, these are the units that we are getting them. Uh, each tier and each rugby adds a unit to the unit panel. Completing of Age of Reckoning except adds special unit mercenaries to Grudge Settler units panel to instant recruits. Instant recruit always good too. So we actually see what they have here. So we have Shield Breaker and Bonus Infantry. Slayers have Sundering and Extremely Deadly Death Blow. Trapnel on the and Monstrous Impact. On the Grudge Catapult. Uh, Guardian and Charge Defense. Hammers get Frenzy and Frostbite. This is so good for them. These Hammers are going to be crazy on Thorgrim. So, Hammers weakness, they're slow. And they could use some melee attack. And Frenzy will definitely give them enough to be super freaking deadly, I think. These guys are going to be insane. But I don't know how many we can have. Iron Drakes, extra range flamers, and they apply flammable too, so they kind of buff themselves. So they give weakness to fire, and they do fire, and have 120 range. It's a normal, like 90. Those guys are stupid. Troll Hammer Torpedo Gyrocopters. So, anti large missiles. Armor piercing, too. Flame cannons. Has increased armor. Oh, wait! Shrapnel projectiles. What does that mean? I thought it was like always for flame cannons. So this unique thing is actually shrapnel. So, what does our normal stuff have then? 
like Ganon's. It doesn't actually say Shrapnel, but I know they changed it. Rudge Rakers? Uh, aren't they the DLC re uh, thing? We are not allowed to look at the uh, DLC stuff yet, so... Um, Flame Can I think they have changed all projectiles of Flame Cannon Stone, but maybe it's just a grudge unit. Um, I just want to out-resolve this so we can get a, see if we get a roll off the uh, the new uh, the old Lord Lord traits. Uh, see if we can roll that. Oh, we start with a hammer and a flamer. His starting army is pretty pretty good, actually. Holy shit, his starting army is good. It is time. Um, okay, we just uh, push through a turn then. You know, Grombindel kind of climbed on my list to be maybe playing. We already have a request for Grombindel anyway. That's uh, been pushed since DLC was coming out. So we might play Grow Middle just to see the hero too. Or the legendary lord from the grudge. Let's see if we got any new traits. We did. Ilbius. Unit mass and charge defense. Oh, but I kind of wanted to see what else we had. Oh. Let's just get... Let's recruit him and we'll Let's pop another turn in. Here. Sounds like a great plan. Yeah, I kind of want to do a really, really chunky Empire run, but I also kind of want to do it with the DLC rights. Um... This is so good for him, by the way. Okay, uh, let's see if we got a new... Disciplined. You know, I'll take you and save you just because. Because you're disciplined. Okay, let's check the Nurgle stuff done. Great, welcome. Uh... Dane, new... Nurgle boy. That's a free dude. So... He does not do Nurglings anymore. What's it actually asked about the start trade here again? Tell I right? Did you ask? Here. Recruitment, health for Nurglings, tongue growth, and something like Flake Spread. Adds a blessed symptom when generating plagues. Adds 10 additional blessed symptoms for every one rank of the faction leader. Or, uh, 10 ranks. Recruitment help for all demonic units by 10%. What's a new guy do? Gains rewards based on number of plagues on non nurgle factions. Faster cycling for poppies, camping movement for plague cultists, element blades, regeneration when fighting an enemy with plague. I don't think they really think they need that. Melee attack for fighting enemy with plague. I like the Nurgling on the chair. I guess we can start. Did he move him? No. Let's um, take Kugathon. He gets regen and the whole army gets... Oh no, we get regen and melee attack, it looked like. Or did I read that wrong? If you're fighting an army that has a plague, you get regen and melee attack against that army. 
That's what I read, at least, but maybe I didn't went through it super fast, so... Okay. Yeah, we can read it again. Um... Change anything here. I don't even remember this. Movement disabled. Spreading. Yeah, these are still kind of meh. The path I need 200 infections. Is After earning 200 infections. I need to earn- Ah, oh, shit, I want to do plague stuff. Yeah, let's check the tech tree then. Tech tree definitely looks a lot better. Magic drop rate on the first technology? Campaign movement, man. Extra summons. I actually use the things in here now, too. Infections when plague is spread to own regions and forces. Additional blessed symptoms when generating plague. While symptom locations are next randomized. Oh, you can still get money for plagues, it looks like. Also spreading plagues for all future plagues faction-wide 5%. Plague immunity duration for all future plagues faction. What? Oh, can't you have a constant plague anymore on yourself, I guess? You get plague immunity when you had a plague for a little bit, maybe? Cycle time... Rush a cycle. Oh, you can rush cycles now? Oh, that's a big thing. So we can get the units you actually want faster. Greater Gate of Nurgle for Cultist and Garrison. You get a free Great Unclean on summon for a little bit. Armies get Fecundity, that's the base one, yeah. Um, just a ten. Strength. Bound spells. Battle healing cap. Extra use for great unclean one bounds. Summon beyond. Summon a unit play bearers. Faction leaders army. Festus. Uh, yeah. Um, do you think it actually changed them anything, though? You can check Festus. Up to this. What glorious rot. Uh, yeah. It seems like most factions have, uh, some sort of split technology now. Which is good. Like, it makes stuff much cleaner, right? So, do we get... Ooh. They actually got some new uh, traits to Plague Rush. No, if I can out resolve up to 200 no, plagues, we'll probably do it. It looks bad. Dude, how much did we get for this fight? Okay, let's just get that. My it be... Uh, I can get a 12, it doesn't matter too much though. So... 275. Hmm. 
play duration local region and play spreading chance. This might actually be worth building on. Maybe. We have gates and garrisons. Look at that. We actually... That's a solid freaking garrison too. Two exalted plague bearers. They also apparently added cultist cap to walls. Holy crap. You missed the stream? Ah, it's just started. Both heroes of Nurgle and Col- Wait, what's the main building give anymore? The main building gave... The main building before gave you the caps. So you actually get two of certain units here too. So it's no, no longer just one unit you get either. Wait, what the hell? Plague ridden are in the anti Skaven building? Okay. How you doing, Zero? So, these buildings no longer rotate. It's just the military buildings that rotate now. That's kind of nice, though. So you can always have a, like, straight income and straight... Yeah, this is so much better. Oh, you do get infections from control building too. Having these rotate was so annoying because if you had a public order building and it rotated into like a bad, like level one version, you might not have enough public order to keep not rebelling. I would go from my favorite demon factions to one of my top overall factions. I was not a fan though. I can say before. I think they were fun playing late game when you actually got things rolling, but they were so painful early. Oh, even get some money from the port and infections. Can I just get some boys so I can auto resolve a little bit more? I can get a full army, like straight away. Join the grandest. Experiment. Okay. I guess that's good enough. We should be able to get 200 plagues done. We just uh, go around and do, do a little bit of stuff. Have you gotten any changes? This thing was so bad before. I don't know if they did anything to it. Uh... Just look like sort of the same. That pestilence decay there. Yeah, I think his tree looks sort of the same. Yes, this will aid my and plague of Britain do look sort of the same too. We're not uh, all Apple C only. No, uh, no other stuff is allowed to be shown yet. The rot horde would grow stronger. Are you meaning the uh, the free lord? Uh, we're just checking out changes. We're not gonna be playing Kugat, I think. We are just checking out changes. Submit to my research. Search for expressions. I just hope we have good enough out to resolve. So I don't have to play anything. 
the Beastmen. You mean their new um the those units are probably not in yet. Because they're DLC. Uh if you mean the Pestigors. They're probably not in yet. I... Your big victory. Yeah, I'll take Nurgle's it. Love shields us. 315. How much more do I need? I need a hundred more. Specimens for the battle study. Let's do anything, I guess. In power, grandfather's children. Such power. How mm. fascinating. So hard just to get that little thing. This, this is called chest, but I can't go over that way. But I would like to heal another one. Probably only have skinks, but as we've been kind of just going with it, we probably want to get a few more. Don't have any money to get anything. No, okay, no. Should have maybe recruit an extra lord to bait him out. And check if there's any more new traits. Because he's gonna have a full army real soon. Uh, let's see. Plagueist. That is new and actually pretty decent. Ten uh, percent weapon strength and four defense. That's a pretty deep, pretty decent uh, stuff there. Could have done this, and we could have had some more dudes. Actually, oh, it's four turn build. We need a hundred infections, right? Ish. They recruited another stack. Holy crap, they're recruiting fast. If I weren't so lazy, I could have done this earlier. Hey, can you get over to me? I think you can, right? Even any new traits popped up. Contagious. Ooh, that looks good. This looks like a super nice trait. Contagious. I'm gonna save you. That looks good, really good, actually. Skinks, I need your plagues. Plague. He actually has some sorrows there. Eric Victory, that's all I need. Battle. The ultimate. Mm, 37 infections plus the other two. Yay, plagues unlocked. Let's see how they are. Okay, this is completely new. 
Uh, what are the facts and the benefits from QGAT now? Uh, real C dude? And uh, the new guy, I guess? That's the only one in actual Nurgle, right? So. Uh, plagues are, al allow Nurgle factions to create plagues in their campaign map with infections. Plagues can cause positive or negative effects on the enemy. All plagues are made up from three symptoms in the panel, each providing both types of effects. Selecting a symptom begins the new creation of a plague. After selecting a starting symptom, only adjacent symptoms will be added for the plague. Adjacent symptoms will be highlighted. Uh, symptoms can also be blessed, boosting their effect. If a blessed symptom is used in a plague, it will c consume its blessing and no longer have boosted effects on the next one. Uh, when a symptom is selected for a new plague, its positive negative effects for Nurgle effectively will be displayed here. Once three symptoms have been selected, the plague modifiers will become available and improve the new plague. That's nice. Immunity duration can also be reduced as a part of the plague modifier. This is the number of turns that a non Nurgle target will resist catching. Oh my god, they added immunity to plagues for artifact hands! Hell yeah. So you can't get just get insta plagued again. A uh, number of turns can be up. We could do this so it actually doesn't... So you have a base of five turns immunity when you get a plague now. Oh, that's so good. Hope it works on Skaven Plague too. Uh, before plagues can be created, you must assign a target where it will be released. Only Lord Forces and Settlements you own can be selected. Uh, okay. Once a target uh, for your plague is selected, you can choose one of the two creation methods. Infect option is for a settlement, or you can summon a cultist. Yeah, not the same as before. For every plague created, a symptom location in the panel will be randomized, and a new blast symptom will appear. Oh, you can't make the perfect plagues every time now? Any symptom previously used in a plague will become available as a starting symptom in the next plague. Okay, that's definitely a lot different than it was before. So you cannot guarantee to get a super duper plague. So we have a blessed. This symptom is blessed. Why can't I start? Oh, okay. New fancy effects. Where can I have to start in the middle? I have to start in the middle. So you have to take whatever thing is in the middle. It's a really good one though. Uh, okay. I go for military ammunition and some power. Lushy abundance for free. Upkeep. I can't get to that one. Mm. Nurgle Corruption. Unless you have bundles, it's kind of nice. Vanguard, I love personally, so if I would to make this plague, I probably would do this plague. And then we can increase spread chance for 50 symptoms each, up to a maximum of 30. That is a very high spread though. And duration can be increased to 6. And you could also reduce immunity to two turns minimum. For a 650 we could cast this plague. Witcher skill tree. 
Yeah, the mutations kind of looked like that, right? It's in one of the skill trees. Sort of. I wonder how much this is when it, when you just hit blessed on like one of these things, for example. What happens to flashy abundance? Because these are currently blessed. Like double effectiveness if it blessed. Number of new blasts. Three. Are we two uses? I don't think that it has anything to do with uses. Blasts are just buffed versions of the base version, like this. This is the base versions. The blasts, I think, are just better. I would think 15% is normal, right? It could be 22. Oh, you mean, oh, you, yeah, that could actually be two. The fleshy abundance, so I could get two uses instead of one. That could be true. This definitely makes things a lot more interesting when playing, um, playing Nurgle, I think. Looks like very good changes for Nurgle. Yeah, I saw that. The blast changed when he used them. Or uh, everything gets randomized, pretty much. The only thing that was, like, constant... So if we were to do this plague, one of these two would be the starting. The next plague we do. So if we do this plague here, I guess we can see, because I can actually send it out. Uh, select... Let's do Kugat here, for example, then. Is it diff... Oh! Cultists are no longer... Okay, so Cultists is the same price as Infecting now. They were slightly more expensive before. Oh, we have to wait three turns... Oh, it's three turns cooldown to make a new Plague? I hope it would have re-rolled before we... Um, so I could see the next roll. Because it should start on one of these two, I think. Oh, I can't actually infect. They will wail. I can't actually infect uh, my own dudes with a plague priest anymore. I think I thought I could do that before. Hmm. Okay, it looks like overall really good changes for Nurgle, from what I can see at least. They moved all the stuff around. They made it more. Way more streamlined, I feel. Like, actual building-wise and stuff. Looks good. I don't know any other big changes if they made any to Nurgle. If I haven't missed anything. But yeah, it's mostly the buildings and the new plague system. Hey. Okay, okay uh, we will check uh, if... Uh, if uh, we actually... We can check Festus if he has the same system then. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know I should have uh, taken the crate on myself, but I wanted to see the plague if it was more expensive, but it was the same price. Uh, I need to run to the bathroom though. So I'll be right back. 